believe in yourself? Huh? Who else gon' believe in you? Who else gon' believe in you? Who else gon' believe in you? Believe in yourself, yeah. Who else gon' believe in you? Who else gon' believe in you? Thanks everybody for tuning in to the Manny Hall Show. Tonight I'm going to be interviewing Calvin Love. We're here at Little Giants. Hopefully y'all can see the sign. It's really dope. Workout facility just for kids. Man, we're going to learn so much tonight. It's going to be very informative. We're going to see how he got started, what inspires him, what motivates him, and why he decided to go this route in a niche market that most people are afraid to even touch. We're about to get it in. Manny Hall Show. Calvin Love. Little Giants. Let's go. What's going on, bro? How you doing, man? Good, man. Yeah, it definitely was a yeah, no problem. It's a pleasure to meet you, man, and uh, I love what you're doing here. You Appreciate definitely got to tell me more about it. But let's start with your name and what you do. All right, my name is Calvin Love, and I'm the founder and the executive director of Little Giants, okay. the only fitness center in Cleveland geared for children. I love it. What made you get started? <clears throat> well, uh, about seven years ago, I had a little cousin at the time. He was uh, 12 and 305 pounds. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So. Unfortunately, he was too heavy to participate in organized sports. Yeah. You know, basketball, football. Uh, the problem is, you know, his mother worked two jobs, so she didn't have the time to really yeah. invest in him. That makes so sense. I started taking him to the gym with me. Okay. And after two weeks, he lost 25 pounds. Shoot. Yeah. That's what's so, up. So I started thinking, I said, I wonder how many other kids is going through this. Yeah. And the thing that I noticed immediately was not just the weight loss, just his whole or about himself changed. Yeah. You know, he was always a very defensive kid. Okay. Once he started seeing that weight come off, he was no longer defensive. He felt better about himself. I know? love so, that. That's so what's up. That's the birth of Little Giants. Yeah. And I think it's such a great <clears throat> concept, man, right. of what you're doing because, uh, you know, like you alluded to that point that this is the only one in Cleveland. Right. And, like, I would probably argue across the state there's not too many either. Yeah, it, 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 you're right. Absolutely right. There's nothing... I mean, you have places where, you know, a mother can go or a father can go to the gym, but they have to have their kid in a daycare facility yeah. or, or yeah. a child's area, a children's yeah. area, you know? Yeah. And meanwhile, a kid is sitting there not being active. Right. You know, they normally give them some type of unhealthy snack just yeah. to, to tie them over and tie exactly, them yeah. And all they're doing is, is feeding the vicious cycle that we do. Yeah. You know? Now, let, let's talk about this journey with your mm -hmm. little cousin because... You know, that definitely hit home for you. Absolutely. Um, but, like, just walk me on that whole journey of, like, his mental state before and after and all of that. Uh, before, I mean, he got in trouble in school every day because of his weight, you know. Yeah. Kids would pick on him, so, of course, naturally, he has to defend himself. Yeah. Know? So, he built up so much anger to where anything you would say to him, he would, he would snap. Wow. You know? So taking him to the gym not only gave him an outlet to release some of that anger but it also allowed him to really realize that wow I am you know somebody you know I am I can do what these other kids are doing absolutely so yeah that that was the biggest change I noticed immediately yeah mm -hmm. and so with with his uh weight being it the way it was at that time like what was that relationship dynamic with his mom and dad and oh. his caregiver Unfortunately, you know, it was pretty typical. Okay. You know, he was a, uh, come from a, a single parent home, you know, his, his dad wasn't around. Yeah. You know, his mother, you know, just, she, she struggled to make ends meet, so she worked multiple jobs. Yeah. You know, so when she did have time for him, she uh -huh. overcompensated that, you know. Gotcha. And she pretty much pacified him with anything he mm, Okay. Being food. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. not knowing you know, that she was actually crippling him. Gotcha. You know, but unfortunately, that's something that's passed down, mm -hmm. you know, from generation to generation. Yeah. Like that right now, so. You know, can you speak to those parents that are in that same situation? Mm -hmm. I mean, because it's like, and the bad part is like, it's sad because you kind of understand what they're going through. Right, right. Because they have to work and then they get home and it's easier to just throw on some chicken nuggets and fries, you know, and it's right, like, right. And, then, and, he's, and they go to the store and just buy all the snacks that they can't right, want. Right. You know, can you speak to those parents? Well, education is key, yeah. you know, and that's what we strive on here. 
you know, it's one thing to bring your child here and we train them for an hour. Yeah. You know, but all of our results come from the education and the buy-in we get from the parents. You gotcha. Know? So it's important that parents take the time to sit and read what they're feeding their child. Mm. You know, a lot of a lot of parents don't even know how to read nutrition labels. Wow. You know, they don't understand that just because you can put in a microwave and it be done in two minutes doesn't mean that that child can sustain from that food that you're giving them. Because gotcha. it's not food. Gotcha. You know, so it yeah. starts with education. Yeah. You know, and you get that buy-in completely from the child and the parent. Mm -hmm. That's how you can really, really influence change. That makes sense. So are some of those things that, you know, we're feeding our children, are they addictive? Uh, absolutely. I mean, it starts from a... I went to a um, childhood obesity conference in Atlanta yeah. this past summer. And there were various researchers and scientists from all over the world there mm -hmm. pretty much coming to present their findings. Yeah. And what I found that everyone had in common was that it starts in the, uh, in, in the womb as mm -hmm. a fetus. And wow. So whatever the, the mom is, 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 is craving and, and eating, she's conditioning that child's palate. Mm. You know, so unknowingly, you know, we're, wow. we're creating That's pretty deep. this issue yeah. from, 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 from the fetus state. Yeah. And it's more prominent than young girls. Wow, I love that. Well, mm -hmm. Bay, I hope you listen to this talking to my wife, bro, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> because we got a yeah. three-month-old. And um, uh -huh. that was very important for me, like when she was pregnant, like, Bay, make sure you eat your vegetables. Because without knowing it by your mm -hmm. statement, I kind of had that feeling like, man, I think there's a connection. Absolutely. So I'm glad you're talking about Absolutely. that. Yeah, I mean, three months old, I mean, right now it's, it's, it's imperative that, you know, you condition, is it a boy or a girl? It's a boy. It's a boy, condition him to, you know, eat vegetables, eat yeah. celery, eat yeah. carrots, you know, things that are that'll be nutritious for mm -hmm. him. And as a dog, you know, it just become natural, you know, yeah. it's like drinking water. Gotcha. You know? So while, while that woman is breastfeeding, mm -hmm. Um, is it important for what she's eating mm -hmm. oh, to actually have oh, an yeah, impact absolutely. on that breast milk? Yeah, it, from when it comes from the teeth to that to that child's mouth, it's, she that child is taking in everything that she's consumed for that wow. day. And if she's not eating any nutritious foods, gotcha, that's being passed around mm. to the child. Wow. You know, so. so then, if she's eating like let's say like a lot of chips, burgers, fries, and all that mm -hmm. bad stuff. Traditionally, that child palate will chances are he or she mm. will crave high sodium food. Wow. You know? Yeah. And once they once that but kids start eating real food, yeah. that's what they're gonna give them. Wow. That that's really mm -hmm. deep. And I don't even really understand uh, the full dynamic of it. Right. But like as you talk more and more about it, it's just like it's so profound because <laughs> you know, like I'm thinking about all my other kids that mm -hmm. we have and it's like some of them like really love junk food. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, while the mother is pregnant, although she's starving for this, all these crazy right. different things, she really has to understand what she's doing. Because yeah. I've read mm -hmm. some study that talked about those cravings aren't necessarily you want some Doritos or you want some French fries, but more so whatever is inside of that Dorito yeah. or mm -hmm. that French fry. But you automatically think oh man, I need some french fries, but what you're really needing is that particular nutrient exactly. that's inside exactly. of there. Exactly. The, the same, unfortunately, this is this is what I picked up from that, that conference I attended. Okay. Um, you take a, a person that's addicted to heroin or alcohol, you know, when they get that fix, our, our brain releases dopamine. Gotcha. For a short period of time. The same applies to sugar mm. or sodium or whatever. Once your mind and your body is craving it, you... You get it, it's immediately gratifying, releases a dopamine, but it's temporarily. Then you mm. crave it again and again and again, and it creates an addiction. Wow, mm -hmm. that's really deep. Yep. So what about all the individuals that you talked about sugar, mm -hmm. that like, okay, I can't drink water. Okay. Like, so what I'm gonna do is add in all these different flavors <laughs> of stuff. Right, right. And you know, someone was telling me the other day that you gotta be careful with that as well, because the chemistry changes and it's no longer water. Exactly. So we, I'm, I'm big on, on, on infusing water. Yeah. But infuse it with natural products, gotcha. natural fruit. Gotcha. So there's nothing wrong with taking fruit and chopping up some cucumbers or some mm. strawberries mm. And, and let it sit in the water. And yeah. now you have that natural strawberry flavor. Gotcha. You have a natural cucumber flavor. I love that. So how long should they leave the fruit in there, though? Uh, a lot of times overnight is best. Okay. You know, you just fill up a jug of water. Cut up some fruit, leave it in there overnight, and okay. you have it for the next day. Gotcha. But meal prepping, you know, you got mm, to prepare. Okay. You know, yeah. Preparation is yeah. key. 
So, okay, so talking about meal prep, and bro, I, lo- I know I got a lot of questions, man, but this that's is cool, really good, good stuff that you're saying. <laughs> um, but in regards to meal prep, how can a parent help their kids in terms of meal prep? Because well, they're going to school, they got all these crazy options. Right. Well, here's the thing. Again, education, but when you're meal prepping, the family should be involved. Mm. So now you're killing two birds with one stone. You know, do it as a family. Yeah. You know, as you guys sitting at home, or if it's a mother, son, or a father, daughter, or whatever, you know, use that time to meal prep together. You know, now you're spending time with one another. Now yeah. You're inclusive as a family. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's dope. Mm-hmm. That's dope. So, should they try to kind of not so much force, but persuade their child to? bring some of these healthy snacks to school because you know they might get teased. Oh yeah, of course they will. And, and fortunately, you know, a lot of our schools are realizing that, you know, the foods that we're giving our children is, is, is high in sodium, it's processed food, it's yeah. not nutritious foods. Yeah. So hopefully over time, we'll see that trend start to change. Mm-hmm. But however, you know, it starts at home, Yeah. you know? Some kids are being picked on because they're called nerds because they study, you know, a lot. Yeah. The same could apply to this. You gotcha. Know, teach gotcha. the kid the importance of being healthy. That's good. So, I love that. Mm-hmm. So, with your cousin that you talked about earlier, mm-hmm. like, what kind of steps did you provide to him in order to get on the, the right track? Well, the biggest thing with he and I was, like I said, his dad wasn't around, his mother worked multiple jobs, so fortunately, he spent a lot of time alone. So the one-on-one time with me was key, you know. And then secondly, um, I not only told him what to eat, I told him why mm. it was more beneficial okay. for him to eat. Okay, that's and good. That's where that education component comes Yeah, from. okay. So and then, so, so give me some of the things that you told him to eat. Okay, instead of, you know, I, I talked to his mom, you know, when she did come home. Yeah. But, Instead of buying processed chicken nuggets, I'm gonna show you how to make your own chicken nuggets. Mm, okay. You know, with a real chicken breast. Gotcha. You know? So gotcha. things like that, you know. Okay. I told him you have to incorporate some type of vegetable mm. in your meal. Gotcha. And then I showed him how to, you know, prepare mm. a healthy vegetable. You know, so from that alone, he he started to see how it was, you know, that meal prep time how it affected him. Yeah. Not only performing in the gym. But he started to see the weight just gotcha fall. so then so you noticed that it became easier for him to work out exactly. by actually having more fruits and vegetables inside of his body yeah nourishment now. yeah you know because sometimes if you're not putting food in your body you know you don't have any energy yeah your body can't sustain so, so bro why do we feel that we can survive off the, like chips i mean i mean you I, i'll see cats that haven't drunk water in months right and you know what i'm saying they'll tell uh-huh. me like man i just live off pop and juice like yeah. i'm good and, and how old do they look <sighs> yeah that's, exactly. that's a good question yeah. you know so yeah. it starts although it might not affect them you know physically from, from something that we can see yeah you know it, it might not have the gut or or, or be heavy but you know, their organs are, are mm. slowly dying. Wow. Them, you know? Yeah. And yeah. This thing is really affecting yeah. them in the long run. Okay. You know, I have, I have, I'm saying, but I have 30, I'm 37 years old. Okay. I have friends that's, that's my age, but they look well into their 40s. Yeah, that's sad. Yeah, that's Just sad. because of the way they, they, mm-hmm. they party, they, 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 they don't drink water, they drink, they smoke, and yeah. they don't exercise, you know, so. Because it's like you only get one body. Right. So it's like, if we damage it, we can't go put in our car like, hey, I had a free life. Mm-hmm. Can I turn this in? It's like, you done. <laughs> right, yeah. And it's like, like you're talking about, it's like you'll see people in their 40s that really look like they're in their 50s and 60s. Exactly. And, and it's about balance, honestly. Yeah. When you're working with children, and like I said, it starts at that age, it's important that we, just, we teach them balance. You know? Okay. Like, I'm not going to say, all right, mom, dad, you got to... Take everything away from them. No cookies, no gotcha. candy, no cakes. Gotcha. But it's teaching them the importance of understanding what they're consuming and mm-hmm. how it affects their body. Yeah. You know, so they know. Okay, if I eat, you know, I, uh, if I go to McDonald's today, I know I gotta eat vegetables for the rest of the week. Yeah. You know, it's, gotcha. It's just gotcha. Teaching okay. Teaching them to be aware. Yeah. And conscious of what they're doing. That's what's up. Mm-hmm. So tell me about your own personal journey. Before you got started with Little Giants, you said, man, I'm going to get this thing going. Like, what's your personal journey? Like, you a young cat. You doing your thing. Talk to me. Well, um, I've, I've always been very small growing up, actually. 
obviously. Okay. When I got, I was, I was, I've always been very active into sports, but I was so small, um, it kind of prevented me from getting to certain levels. Gotcha. But uh, once I got to high school, I was probably the smallest in my class. I was only 98 pounds. Oh, wow. But I was pretty good in sports. Yeah. So, so what did you play? I played baseball, like okay. baseball and football. That's cool. Out here in Cleveland? Mm-hmm. East what school high did school. you? Okay. East High, yeah. That's what's up. Okay. Yep. So, I went to uh, Maple. What's, oh, Maple. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. And so you said you're 37. I'm 36. I just turned 36. Class so I graduated. Okay. 2000 mm-hmm. for me. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I played baseball up through high school uh, since I was six years old. And um, I, was, I was just always active. But I didn't actually start lifting weights and working out heavy until I got to college. Gotcha. And then I started to see my body change and and to see how beneficial it was for me. Gotcha. And that led to when I joined the military, I was in the army, and my, my fitness level, I mean, it allowed me to surpass a lot of my my my, my soldiers that I was in. Gotcha. Okay. So from there, it just I mean, it just blossomed, and it's just yeah. became a part of my my daily lifestyle. You know? Okay. And then so now you switch and transition to. Being a business owner too. Yeah. So how how that did you got like the business school background? Like what happened there? Well, my I, my degree I have an undergrad in business management. And okay. A master's in uh, business administration. Okay. Awesome. Accounting. Okay. Um, so I mean I've always wanted to own my own business. Yeah. You know, uh, but I wanted to do something that was different. Yeah. You know, and I always wanted to work with children. You know, so this allowed me to kind of put my quote unquote my business degree to use. Yeah. Work with children and run my own business. Yeah, I love that. Now, do you have kids of your own? I do. I have a daughter. She's 14 years old. Okay, that's what's up. And she's very active as well. You know, she she works out. You know, she plays basketball, volleyball, track. You know. Yeah. So it's just about giving her. She's she's aware. Okay. Of how important the physical fitness is. Okay. So earlier you talked about like this balance, but how can a parent just like. They know they did wrong right now, bro. Yeah. Like, it, <laughs> yeah. it, it, it's no right. fans of us about it. But they want to kind of get started. Like, what advice would you give to them? Just acknowledge that they're wrong. Okay. Acknowledge it. Okay. You know, that, that's the hardest part right there. Yeah. Once you identify the problem, and if you're a part of the problem, then you can start providing solutions. Okay. You know? So so once a parent identify, okay, I'm contributing to my child's yeah. weight gain or obesity. Yeah. What can I do? And what's some practical steps that they can take just starting off? A practical what? Some practical steps that they can take just starting off. Well, just, I mean, make small, subtle changes. You know? Okay. First thing, drink more water. Okay. You know, a lot of people don't even drink water. They don't even, probably haven't even had water today. In, today yeah. At all. You know, yeah. if they're looking at this now. You yeah. Know? yeah. So the main thing, increase your water intake. Okay. And then from there, increase your, your, your activity level. So instead of, you know, taking the elevators or, you know, take the stairs or leave out and walk down the street and back you know just okay. some small changes like that can okay. be ex- extremely beneficial so it should really start with them and then allow them really to be an example for their child exactly, exactly. okay i have so many parents that i train as a result of them yeah. sitting here watching their child work out oh wow okay you know? yeah because they, they see you know the effort that their child is putting in yeah so they got to reciprocate that you know oh that's what's up mm-hmm. Okay, so it makes me kind of think that for our kids, for the most part, they wouldn't even want a cell phone or to play game on the phone unless they saw us with our phone in our hands all the time. It's like, yeah, yeah. hey, dad and mom, they always got this thing in their hand. <laughs> right, like, what is right, that? Right. What can I do on there? Right. So I think you're right. Like, it really does start with them. But it's like this journey that each child is on is going to be totally different as well. Yeah, absolutely. Because, like, as you talked about your cousin, well, somebody else might be in a different situation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and that's the good thing about, you know, a lot of kids that come through these doors here at Little Giants is that I have a young kid, he's eight years old, and he has diabetes, mm-hmm. you know? And I, and I have to train him a certain way gotcha. to help him overcome some of those obstacles, gotcha. obstacles that diabetes present. Yeah. But then I have another kid who's, who's nine years old, but he's almost at an elite level for that, that age. Wow. You know, so, you know, we have different training styles for different kids that come through the door. Gotcha. Now, with him being eight years old, what are his biggest challenges with that diabetes that he has? Um, Just being tired. You know, making sure his, so before he come, every time he comes in, 
I check his his glucose. Okay. Before we train, so if it's at a certain between a certain range, I need to give him some type of sugar or, or some gotcha. type of carbs to give him energy. If it's too high, okay. You know, we have to kind of give him some some glucose pills or glucose shots. You know, insulin. I'm sorry. Gotcha. But um, so just maintaining his his, his energy levels. You know? Okay. And is how how does the workouts go with him? Well, the main thing with him, I try to focus on uh, cardio. Okay. You know, because, uh, you know, I'm not sure if, if you're familiar with how diabetes affect the body. Yeah, let's just talk it, about it. It affects, it, in his case, it affected his pancreas. Okay. And um, his stomach started really bulging, you know, so in order to get that down, we need to increase his um, his cardio. Gotcha. Know, just get, get the blood flowing and get his heart rate going and everything because... We gotta get his, his vital organs, you know, moving again. So. Yeah. So so what's the ultimate goal with this young man? Uh just teaching him how beneficial and important exercise is. Okay. You know, because he's gonna he's gonna be battling this disease probably for the rest of his life. Mm -hmm. You know, unfortunately, because yeah. it's type one. Oh, so wow. uh, we have to teach him that now this is your lifestyle. Yeah. You know? So yeah, it's tough. Right. And this is not easy, and especially for a kid. And that's why I definitely applaud you I appreciate that. and your team for doing this mm -hmm. because it's not easy for an adult, and I know it ain't easy for a kid. Uh, it's not. And I'm glad you brought up my team because I have an amazing team. You know, um, that's the most important part of what we do is that, you know, we can have a young kid that come in here and, and um, my style of training, it can be somewhat militant. Yeah. And we may may or may not vibe, but I have yeah. another coach here that, you know, that's a little bit more reserved yeah. and, and, and have that patience to, to gotcha. work with that child, you know. Gotcha. So I have a young, if a young girl comes in and, and she wants, she's aspired to be, you know, an elite, you know, gymnast. Well, I have a trainer that can work with her for that, you know, so. I love that. And let's, let's briefly talk about just entrepreneurship mm -hmm. and business ownership uh, for a minute. Okay. So you brought up that team aspect, which is important. And I think there's a lot of individuals who don't really realize the importance of that. Mm -hmm. So they become bullheaded. Right. This is my business. This is where I want to yeah. do it. Yeah. And you got to understand that there are different individuals that can really assist you in uh -huh. those areas. Absolutely. I think the key to success as a business owner, owner is humility. Mm -hmm. You have to understand and know how to recognize your own flaws and your own abilities. You know, if I can't do something, if I know my counterpart is better, I'm going to seek my counterpart for not only advice, but I may push that potential client to him. Gotcha. Gotcha. You know, gotcha. it's just, yeah. you know, you take the, you, you have to be, be humble. Yeah. Well, why do you think that that's missing so much in business? Unfortunately, um, it's... A lot of people go into business with a mindset of kill or be killed, mm -hmm. you know. Um, some people say competition is good, but when you don't recognize your competition, you know, yeah, that's the key to your success. Absolutely. You know, just focus on you, keep your head down, stay hungry, stay humble, stay in your lane, keep your eyes on your vision and your goal. Yeah. You know? Now, how did you identify your team? Uh... Honestly, based on their commitment to not me, but Little Giants and what mm. we stand for. That's an important thing passion. you just said. Yeah. I love that. I mean, it, I have great friends that want to be a part of it. But yeah. if you're not committed to Little Giants vision yeah. and what we stand for, mm. and which is, you know, improving the health and wellness of our, of our youth. Yeah. And, you know. Unfortunately, we can't do business together. I love that. But luckily and fortunately, I have a team that truly supports that. That's what's up. And they, they recognize it's, it's not about me. It's not about I love me. that. It's about the betterment of our youth. I love that. So I'm getting excited with this interview <laughs> now because you're talking my language as well. Right. Um, I, I once read where they talked about Martin Luther King mm -hmm. and that march. And they said that those individuals that came out there wasn't for Martin Luther King, but it was because of the mission. Yeah. Yep. So it's like they, they're following that. Yeah. So it's like, you know, your team is like, man, I'm behind this vision. Yep, yep. Because it's, it's bigger than me. Yeah. You know, I can leave here and, and I could pass away. Yeah. But this mission should go on. Gotcha. You know? And like, like Martin Luther King's dream is still going on. Mm -hmm. Because people believed in that vision, not yep. him. That's you it. Know? And that's, that's what it's it. about. 
It's about leaving a legacy for our children. I love it. So what's next for Little Giants? What are we going to do next? Well, my goal is to uh, make Little Giants a household name. Okay. No different than, you know, the YMCA. Yeah. You know, uh, we need to expand our reach. Yeah. You know, there's, you know, we need to expand in other communities. I want Absolutely. To move west and then eventually south and, you know, kind of just go from there. Gotcha. There's so many children out here that need our support. Yeah. Not only physically, but, but mentally and emotionally mm -hmm. as well. There's so many other components yeah. to what we do here. You know, and um, it's, it's just, it starts with our children. And just so we're clear, this is not uh, just a black organization. This is any kid that comes through that door is welcome. Yes. Any child, any any color, race, age, body size, it doesn't matter. We just want you to come through these doors. Yeah. Now, because speaking of age, what, what age do you guys stop at? Uh, we, sit, we start at six and okay. start to 17. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, six to seventeen. Awesome. Now, if you know they want more information, how do they get in contact with you? Uh, you can go to our website at littlegiantscleveland.org, littlegiantscleveland, all one word, dot org, or you can email me directly, C Love, C L O V E, at littlegiantscleveland.org. Cool. So, speaking of your team, um, you got any special shout outs you want to give them? Oh, I can start out with um, so my, my buddy Javez. Uh, he, he specializes in boxing. Uh, he's probably, he is the best coach in Cleveland. Love it. Uh, he starts to start him out as young as four years old. Oh, wow. Yeah, teaching them, you know, different stances. Yeah. How to throw a jab, footwork. Okay. Uh, so that's Javez. He's, uh, he's actually goes by Kingdom Fitness as well. Nice. Uh, right here is uh, Brittany. She, uh, she's new, actually. I actually trained her. She started as one of my clients. And uh, I noticed her passion for fitness. Hmm. And uh, so she specializes in bringing, you know, the parents, the mothers in with their young girls, empowering our young I girls. I love that. You know, so that's uh, Brittany, be fit with Britt. And then you have Coach Sylvia here. Uh, she specializes in strength and conditioning uh, for all levels. Oh, dope. Yep. That's cool. Yep. And that's me right there. I do, my style of training is pretty much, like I said, Military style. Yeah. Uh, focus on strength, core strength, conditioning, um, athletics as well. Yeah, and, and see, what's really good about that is everybody has their specialty. Everybody has their lane within the vision. So mm -hmm. it's like we often talk about stay in your own lane. Well, right. we can be going the same direction, <laughs> but you're still in your it, own exactly, lane. You know exactly, what I'm saying? Exactly. And we all going to reach the same goal. Yeah. You know? And I uh, have other people that's a part of our team that's not up there. You know, we have doctor that's on board you nice. know, she does all of our, um, our our you know glucose screenings our blood pressure screening yeah she, you know, uh, she does a nutrition coaching for us you know we have an intake specialist who takes everything that we're doing and compile that data to so we can quantify our results it's one thing to post a picture or show a picture of before and after yeah but again like i said it's bigger than just showing physical answers no this is well, this was the first time that I actually heard about you guys, so your PR person that mm -hmm. saw a f post I had on Facebook about just getting more entrepreneurs right. involved in the city of Cleveland, but mm -hmm. why didn't I know about you guys? Unfortunately, I got to do a better job promoting, man. Okay, you okay. Know, uh, and, and again, we just opened in, in May. Okay, awesome. So we're only about eight months, eight or nine months. Yeah, in, you know, uh, yeah. So we're, we're starting to, to build some traction here. In yeah, and, and see, for me, organizations like this need to get more love. Yeah. yeah you know, it doesn't great. need to be in the dark. It's just only the people in the neighborhood know about it yeah, and a couple yeah. of people on Facebook. But, like, this is major right here. Like, this is, like, life-changing. This it, kind man. of organization can really transform Cleveland, period, bro. I appreciate that. that you know what I'm saying? I like, I, I, and, I mean, forgive me. If I'm overstepping my bounds, but it's just like, I see something like this, even as it gets nice in the summer, it's like y'all having events in the park somewhere yep. where it's like, hey, yep. Lil' Gems is sponsoring this, Lil' Giants, mm -hmm. y'all come out, we here. Yep. So yep. instead of like having the traditional hot dogs and hamburgers and stuff, like we got some healthy mm -hmm. barbecue yep. options, you know what I'm saying? Like we just getting it in. Yeah, that's exactly what the plan is for this uh, that's what's 2018 up. summer. You that's know, what's like, up. We got a lot of good things cooking up, yeah. you know, so I uh, just... Just keep your ears up. You know, keep, your, keep your head up looking for us. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm excited about what you guys are doing. You got any last words for the people? I don't. Uh, just, you know, please come check us out. You know, again, our ages start from 6 to 17. Um, come see what we have. We have some great classes. We do 
group fitness classes, we do personal training, we do nutritional and dietary, dietary instructions. So right, check sir. us out. And our membership for unlimited classes throughout the week is twenty five dollars per month. Wow. So, y'all that's very affordable, y'all. Yeah, Come on now. Absolutely. absolutely. Even the people that feel like I can't afford a whole lot, you, you can afford that. <laughs> Yep, yep. Absolutely. So just come check us out. Even if you want to come peek in and see what we're doing, you're more than welcome. That's what's up. Yep. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time, bro. I really appreciate it. Appreciate you. Manny Hall, show we out.